special sacred stones. Hundreds of thousands have been found in Southern Africa. Now, because we had a, a breakthrough energy conference, you'll automatically notice that they resemble a, a torus shape. So I'm giving you a little hint as to what these are for. But in South Africa, the Archaeological Society has it as a logo, and they will still teach you that these are weights for digging sticks, <laughs> that the people made them in the hundreds of thousands when there were only a few thousand hunter-gatherers, because this is from the Stone Age, right? So there were no metal tools. They made this with other stones because they needed weights for their digging sticks when they were digging for roots in the felt. I can't think of anything more insane. These people should be locked up. <laughs> Where's the flagship among all these ruins? And this is where we get to the very important Adam's calendar. It was rediscovered in 2003 by Johann Heiner, and he'll always be remembered for that because this is one of the most spectacular discoveries in all of human archaeological history. Those are the two central calendar stones, circular structure, that is north, that is south, not the trees, the stones under the trees. Um, they're the two central calendar stones. And over there, you see a wooden pole. That's where the stone man used to stand. And right from the stone man across there, across the Horus bird lying there, which you'll see we looking east, exactly east at the rise of the sun, on the edge of this cliff, which is known as a Transvaal escarpment. There's looking north, exactly north, between the two stones. You can see north-south line goes right between the two central calendar stones. And uh, why is it a calendar? This is Jan Heiner showing me for the, for, of our very first visit there why it's a calendar. And he did all the original calculations when he rediscovered it. This setting sun casts a shadow. This rock casts a shadow on this one. And you can tell every day of the year from the summer solstice on this side until the winter solstice on that side and it comes back. So it's still an accurate calendar. And one of the few that I know, uh, I, I can't think of any others that do this, uh, monolithic calendars or Stone Age calendars. This is a 3D reconstruction that we did, um, putting the stone man back in his place, who was removed in 1994 by the Minister of uh, Environmental Affairs, <laughs> <laughs> to put a plaque on it to commemorate the opening of the Blue Swallow Nature Reserve. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> Desecrating one of the oldest sites on Earth. <laughs> and then they try and prevent us going there because we're bringing tourists there and we, we're desecrating the place. <laughs> And there you have, uh, looking out east from the stone man across the, the calendar stones, very distinct Horus stone, looking at what? Three stones that seem to align with those pyramidal structures over there that are aligned with the rise of Orion over there. But you'll see more um, about that now. How do we date the stones? We look at everything because you can't date stones. So you've got to look at everything. Use your, you know, do what the guys in CSI do. Follow the clues and the evidence. And what makes most sense, you have to go with that. So... First of all, this is every stone there is known as dolerite. It doesn't belong there. It is now categorically proven and shown from geological studies that those stones do not belong there. They were brought there by somebody to build the calendar site. That's the edge of the Transvaal escarpment. It's known as Black Reef Quartzite, and it's full of gold. <laughs> There's a gold mine underneath that ridge, actually, an ancient gold mine. The erosion, that piece there broke off there. Uh, that's the erosion on the tip of that ridge, uh, on the break. Um, most geologists I've asked suggested to me, uh, pick a number above 50,000 years for the amount of erosion that happened there. So 50,000 years ago, that piece broke off and landed there. Right? So now we're starting to get to the ancient age of this. But this is one of my best, is the patina growth. Because I've told you already that these, these tools have been molded and shaped. And the patina has grown back. That's what it looks like when the patina is gone, black, and then the patina grows back. This is a great example of a monolith in one of the stone walls that at some point broke and this tip broke off. Look at the patina that's grown back. At the, there's about two millimeters of patina growth. We're dealing with something. This patina is known to grow at about 1,000 one, 1, years per microscopic layer. 1,000 years per microscopic layer. So for a millimeter or two millimeters of patina, we're dealing with something that's 100, 200, 300,000 years old. We don't really have a measure for it, but it's extremely old. And uh, we know that this is not normal archaeology. Look at this beautiful carving of one of the stone structures. So not only did they build the stone circles, but they first carved them into rock. This is another interesting part of this presentation that I normally go into a lot more detail. But look at after they carved this, this crack appeared through the rock. This hornfell stone, you should see the black of the hornfells 
on the crack. On a fresh crack, you'll see the black of the horn fowls. But it's so old that the patina has grown into the crack and completely covered up the black color. So this shows us how old this carving is. So we're dealing with probably 50 to 100,000 years old that this carving is. So these are the kind of indicators that we have to use when you deal with this, with this kind of evidence. Because you can't follow the normal archaeological routes. They just don't have the tools to do that. But this, my friends, is by far the most important discovery, I believe. If you look at the circular, you can see the whole Adams calendar is a circular structure, north-south. But the first thing that you notice is that it's not at 12 o'clock. It's not true north. It's slightly left of center. So Johan Heine and I had it measured, and we found out that there's a 3, three degrees, 17 minutes, and 42 second deviation anti-clockwise. Now, that's not possible, because we're not dealing with magnetic north. We're dealing with true north. And at first, we thought that this had something to do with the processional wobble. So I spent a lot of months trying to analyze and speak to experts in processional counting and all that. And I realized, hold on, I'm barking up the wrong tree. This is true north. Wherever you are in the processional wobble, true north stays at true north, right? So what's going on here? This is three and a quarter degrees deviation. I believe that the man that holds all the information is Charles Habgood, who's been trying to teach us about crustal displacement and crustal shift. I believe that Adam's calendar is a real geophysical example that crustal shift displacement did happen because these guys did not make mistakes. They would not have accidentally built a three and a quarter degrees out of alignment. It's not going to happen. So we know that crustal displacement happened. We just don't know when. But here we have physical, geophysical evidence that it did occur. And then obviously the Orion connection. You can't get away from the Orion connection. All ancient cultures do it. I've mentioned it already. Those three. There's your Horus stone. And very, look at that distinctly carved rock there. Those three, if you lift them up, they align precisely with the rise of Orion's belt when it was flat on the horizon. I've had two separate calculations done by two separate um, astronomers. Both of those will be wrong because not, none of them took into account that three and a quarter degree um, misalignment. So, but it just shows you that they, their calculations are really, really old. That's really interesting. I didn't cross-examine on them. And uh, just to show you these, this beautiful horror stone, I discovered that one morning when I went there uh, with another guy very, very early when I started doing this exploration. And that stone was covered by soil. So we couldn't see. I didn't know that it was actually a Horus or a bird-shaped stone. But then we, when I moved the, the soil away from about there, suddenly this beautiful head and nose appeared. It doesn't look like much from here, but there's nothing to stand on to take photographs. You know, if I step, take one step backwards that way, I, I fall off the edge of the cliff. So. <laughs> um, and there you go. It's about three and a half meters tall. There's a fat belly there that you can't see on this angle. And the nose is broken off. It's probably maybe another foot there that would have extended. If you lift it up, there you go, it reconstructed Adam's calendar. When I called it Adam's calendar, I had no idea how close to the truth it was. This is where humanity was created according to ancient African culture, where the Anunnaki artificially, genetically created the Adamu, the human species that we all belong to in various forms and shapes. And then we get to the discovering of the pyramids. The mystery just, you know, gets better and better. Look at that. This is one of the first pictures taken of Johan in 2003 when he started measuring the calendar and finding out all these mysteries. One of the best pictures because I've been there thousands of times and you just don't get good pictures of the pyramidal structures. There's a third one, a little one over there just sticking its head out. I've been told through various means that there's about 30 meters of sedimentation down there. So we're only probably seeing half of those pyramidal structures um, because of the flood, remember? <coughs> the flood that destroyed all the stuff. That would have covered all of it. Why are they pyramids? Do I, why am I so convinced they're pyramids? For various reasons. First of all, when you go into Adam's calendar, the moment you cross the circle, because there's no obvious circle, it's an imaginary circle. The moment you cross that circle with your GPS, you lose signal. Okay, it works, this, it works here. The moment you walk in there, your signal is gone. And I love the macho guys. They just love it. Oh, my GPS will work. You'll see. I'll show you how my GPS works. <laughs> <laughs> and they go in there. <laughs> It's, it's fantastic watching them. Just see that ego drop very quickly. <laughs> <laughs>
pick it up. So the GPS signal here, the moment you go in there, GPS signal is gone. It's even on the map as Adam's Cannon. Okay, so stop looking and it stop. Yeah. No. So I hope we got this on record, eh? Just say that again, Chris. Yeah, well, when I was standing inside the circle, there's no GPS on my phone for the map. When we walked outside the circle, I've suddenly got GPS. And it shows up as Adam's calendar. So now when you walk in, you'll see your GPS will start doing weird it's things. Gone. Is it gone already? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And that's the first two rocks. That, well, that's what I tell people. It's literally, you take a step in and it's gone. That's strange. Yeah. <laughs> so, maybe you should get a shot of the phone so people know we're not lying. <laughs> it's back. Is it back? That's strange. See, there's it back. Top left corner there. Top left corner. Now, as soon as we walk into there, that goes away. Just go slowly. Yeah. Can't do it too quick, I And imagine. then take us... You're basically one meter in now. Let's go further in. What often happens is that it's, it tells you that you've got GPS. But it, it keeps it keeps cutting and fluctuating, so it keeps pointing you in different directions. So it, it keeps losing signal and then reconnecting, losing and reconnecting because because of the energy fields here. It's gone again. Yeah. It's back. Oh, there it's back again. Yeah, that's what you'll find. It'll come and go. It'll keep yeah. coming and going. Because it's going on and off, on and off, on yeah. and off. But I see what you say because that, that on the map it keeps on turning in circles. That's the little arrow. That's doing it. This. It keeps it's because it loses signal and it gets confused. So that's exactly what happens. It's and people think they got GPS, but they don't because it keeps pointing you in different directions. It's gone. Is it gone again? <laughs> <laughs> Improve your location accuracy. Let's do it once more. Okay, just go slowly and see when it reconnects. Yeah, okay. just outside the stones. That's it. <laughs> there it is in the corner. Amazing. And then when you take the same GPS down to the pyramids, I stood, there were four of us. I will forever regret not taking a photograph of it, because there were four of us standing with GPSs like this. And every GPS gave you a completely different reading. Not just slightly off, but miles off. You were like, you know, in, an, in another province. It was insane, right between the two pyramids. Not only that, but all these ancient cultures built things according to the sacred geometric principles. So I thought, hold on, this will tell me if it's linked or not. Let me draw a golden mean spiral from Adam's calendar and see where it lands. <coughs> well, you know, I didn't have to guess. You got it. So here we can do a beautiful twist on those that want to stick to mainstream science. And we can argue... The argument of probability, which is one of the most commonly argued arguments in science, isn't it? Probability. So the probability factor that the golden mean spiral accidentally ends between the pyramids is so completely out of kill that it has to be linked. I'm so glad that I've just you know, revisited this myself because I've been talking about this for so long. And if you don't do it again, you start doubting yourself. You know, think, is it really? Did we really experience that? And say, so I'm glad that we've done this again. But even earlier when I was flying the drone over here, it was misbehaving. Yeah, I know. That's, I was worried that it was going to lose GPS, that you're going to lose the drone, but I didn't want to tell you that. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs>